Okay, let's take a look at how we can control the destruction of a fractured object in LightWave using Bullet Dynamics. And as you can see in this example here, I'll just go ahead and play it. You can see that the destruction begins in the middle. I'll just stop that. You'll notice that the destruction begins here in the middle and doesn't affect the top or the bottom part. And as we go along you'll notice that in the bottom part of this tower there's a secondary destruction point so that when the top bit comes up on top of it it all smashes down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can um, do this, set this up and um, before I do that, I just want to show you some examples of the default settings or the default sort of setups. Now, in this first tower, as you can see, this is just a default setup and it basically just collapses under its own weight. Now, in this second tower, we've set it to, um, to sleep before it gets uh, struck, and we have an object, in this case, a sphere making contact with it, but you'll notice that as soon as it makes contact with it the whole thing begins to um, fall apart. If we go along in this next example we have one point of destruction and you'll notice that the top tower and the bottom part stay intact. To a certain point you want bits and pieces to fall off and the last example is like the one I just showed you before at the beginning where we have two points of destruction. So let's go ahead and get stuck into it. Here, here we are in Modeler and what I've done is I've just created a tower at 30 meters by 4 by 4 and um, added a whole bunch of segments. In a previous test I added I had uh, a lot less segments and I found that I had these little leftover bits, um, bits that were I suppose uh, uh, open, uh, the polygons were open so they can cause problems so what I've done is I've just added a lot more segments and what I got was a whole bunch of fractured pieces without any errors and without any um, stray polygons and I think there was about eight or so zero polygons in this so that's pretty much what I've done. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. I'll just turn this one off and set up the one I prepared earlier. Okay, so here we have a tower that's pretty much not doing anything and it's fractured, ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll get stuck into setting it up. Okay. If we go over to FX Tools, the first thing we want to do is bring up our bullet window. We want to select our ground and we want to make that a static body. I'm going to change that to box. And then we'll select our tower and we'll make that a parts body. Okay, huh. we've got our um, image back, our colors back. So first thing I'm going to do, I've set up the ground to a box and leave that as it is. It's our collision object and for the tower what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to convex pieces. Okay, it just works a lot better with convex pieces and I'm going to drop this down, the collision margin. What the collision margin actually does is actually extends each piece out by three millimeters. It doesn't actually shift or move the object itself, but during the calculations it comes into it. Thought I'd let you know. Read that in the manual. Um, next step, we can leave it as solid surface or vertices. I found that all three really work. And with regards to mass uh, specifications, you can try given mass or you can try density. What I did was, I pretty much tried both, but I started at 100 then I went up to a thousand and obviously did uh, calculations in between to see what would happen then I went up to ten thousand 
and then I went up to 1 million and um, well pretty much found that the higher the number the more realistic it looked was much heavier so you can try both and see which one gives you the better result as far as the other parameters the only thing I did uh, mess around with was the linear dampening I'm not going to bother all that does is just slows down the pieces so they don't spread out as far but now for the interesting part what we're going to do is we're going to set the glue strength to 100 and what this is going to do is hopefully keep our whole tower together even under its own weight we're not going to start it um, sleeping or anything like that we're just going to leave it at start active and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off braking distance we don't want that we don't want to worry about that now the braking angle will sort of come into play um, depending on how stuck pieces get we can lower that so that we get things uh, uh, moving a little bit more okay so what I'll do is I'll enable the dynamics and let it do its thing and just show you basically what happens okay and as expected and, and I was hoping for this nothing happens we get a little bit of a wobble as the tower settles but the glue is pretty much holding everything together so how do we go about controlling our destruction points well I'll just turn this off and move this out of the way what we need to do is we need to use a null so that the null basically uh, interacts with our tower and more or less dissolves the glue in the, in the particular areas that we want so that the pieces can then start separating and all the rest of the forces take place so what we'll do is we'll add a null and I'll just change that to a ball and I will make this two meters just as an indicator so that we get an idea of how big things are and I'm going to move that up to about halfway and towards the front so that I get the tower toppling forward now it's totally up to yourselves how you want to go about uh, uh, breaking this bit up breaking this this type of um, object up um, you can place a whole bunch of nulls and I'll show you how to add more nulls in a sec but, um, and you can pretty much break it wherever you like now the next step I'll do is I'll just move forward a little bit and animate the null now depending on how oh, how dramatic you want the breakup the initial um, destruction um, depends on how how I guess how much speed you add to the null the slower it moves through it the more subtle the destruction the quicker it moves through it the more um, obvious and more exploding looking sort of destruction but for this I'm just going to keep it nice and mellow and then what I'll do is, is I'll grab these keys and I'm just going to move them forward so that it gives the tower some time to settle and then we'll have the null passing through okay so the next step bring in my dynamics window now what we need to do for the glue strength we need to create a gradient so we'll go over to select gradient and what we want to do is we want this null to act as a glue solvent I guess or, or an intense heat that melts the glue as it passes through the object as opposed to um, moving any of the pieces or colliding with them it actually passes through and reduces the glue strength in that particular area for the rest to take place so what we need to do with our gradient is we need to change it to object distance and we need to select our particular null okay so the next bit is we need to set up the parameters of how much effect the actual null has so first up what we want to do is we want, with the first key we want to set that to zero and then what we want to do is change it to step and add a second key and make that 100 and I might set that to 3 meters so basically what does this mean well if we look at our null 
the zero key represents the center point of this null and the second key represents the outer diameter of this null and how much it will affect. In this case uh, my null item shape is 2 meters but this is set to 3 meters so what I'll do is I'll hit the properties and I'll change this to 3 meters so that we've got a bit more of a visual reference okay so that's pretty much all we really need to do we've got our null and we're telling it to only affect the glue strength from the center point out to 3 meters and the tower here is 4 meters wide so it's going to affect uh, well three quarters of it so let's just close this off and just go out a little bit I think I might change this color that was a silly idea something a little bit darker enable dynamics and minimize that and go to the end key and let's take a look at what happens okay let's close this off and take a better look okay as you can see the tower is just settling and as the null passes through I'll just shade it as the null passes through you can see that it's only affecting that area it's more or less reducing the strength of the glue to zero not affecting the top part or the lower part but obviously the um, physics take place and bits will break now if you want more bits to sort of break off as it's as it's tumbling down what you can do is you can reduce the breaking angle if you reduce the breaking angle more pieces will tend to fly off and 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 break apart you can play around with that and experiment so there we have our results we've got our tower breaking up exactly where we want it to and this is much more of a realistic look say for example if you had a large building or something like that so now how do we go about adding more destruction points well what I'll do is, is I'll select this first of all I'll turn dynamics off I select our null and I will clone it clone it not duplicate it and what I'll do is, is I'll move it down no I won't I will go to modify move path and I'll bring that down okay so basically what's happening is at the moment we've got both going at the same time I'm gonna select our second null and I'm gonna move that forward now this is all experimental but hopefully by the time the top part comes down we're gonna be able to break up the bottom part a little bit more now there's a little trick to setting this up if we go back to our bullet window now if we click back on the T for glue strength what we need to do is we need to include our second null so if we go copy selected layer paste add to layers we've got two now I'm going to select the second null for the um, new gradient and what we need to do is we need to change if we pick the topmost we need to change the blending mode to Photoshop darken so the more nulls you add you can keep adding more and more nulls basically keep the blending mode as Photoshop darken so that they all work together and you can obviously go in and change the parameters or the, or the distance diameter of each one of these nulls and how much it affects if you really want it to blow up a whole a larger area well obviously you can increase um, the parameter increase the distance I'm just going to leave it at 3 so we're pretty much done here Enable, I'm just going to hit reset, enable dynamics, close this off, and just minimize this and go to the end and let it do its thing. Okay, so the simulation is over. Let's have a look at the results. See if we timed it well. Well, we've got our first point of destruction, that's working right. 
as it comes down we've got our second as you can see as it passes through it basically reduces the glue strength in that area and the top of the tower comes and snaps it off so it's pretty much working how I would have wanted it to work so that's pretty much how you go ahead and set up being able to um, control destruction points in your fractured objects for, for a more realistic look so I've taken it to the next step and always try to make an example that's a little bit more realistic than a tower that's made of solid concrete what we have here is a bunch of levels could be a building you could add walls and furniture and whatever but um let's take a look at this first example is this tower falling under its own weight with the default settings second one here is start sleeping that's how you pronounce it start sleeping and I've got a ball coming through hitting it and as soon as the ball hits it you can see that the whole thing is affected and collapses the next example is our glue gradient method and I've just got a null going through the middle area here and it affects that area and as the weight of the top of the um, building or the levels increases it snaps off and comes tumbling down. This next example is the null but I've also parented a sphere to the null and made that a kinematic object so that we get a little bit of destruction so we've actually got a we've got the, 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 the glue uh, reducing and we've got an object um, colliding and that one breaks off and falls down now this particular tower had a um, breaking angle of two degrees I reduced it because this next example had a breaking angle of five degrees and as you can see even under all that weight the top of the tower did not come down so there you have it I'll just play this real quick so you can have a look And there you go. So I hope it's helped. See you next time.